Hey, welcome to this channel and today's video which is on inventory valuation. So we've already uploaded a lot of videos for IGCSE accounting. I hope you've checked them out. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. So what are we going to study here today? First we see why do we need to value our inventory? This chapter is about inventory valuation. We need to understand why, why we value inventory. Then we understand the inventory valuation principle. Then some important terms that are used in the principle. Then the accounting principles that form a basis or the core of this inventory valuation principle. Finally, we see one example on calculation of inventory value. And finally, see the effect of incorrect inventory values on the financial statement. If you want to practice more questions, if you want to have access to detailed notes on this chapter, you can consider joining our paid course, which is just for $99 that gives you access until June 2021. So why would one want to invent value inventory? Why would companies value inventory? First of all, companies prepare income statement to calculate gross profit and net profit. To calculate gross profit, you need the cost of goods sold. Now to arrive at the cost of goods sold correctly, you need the correct closing inventory values. And obviously this closing inventory value will be the opening inventory in the next year. So you need the inventory values to arrive at the cost of goods sold. Secondly, balance sheet is a part of financial statements. Balance sheet presents all the assets and liabilities that the company holds on a particular date. Now inventory is one of the assets of the company. So that also has to be presented under the current assets of the balance sheet. So second purpose is to present the present the current assets properly in the balance sheet. Then obviously every company would maintain computerized inventory records. But in spite of that, many of these companies would still do a physical check of their inventory value the inventory manually. Why? So that they can cross check their inventory records. Cro inventory is subject to a lot of fraud and theft if not kept under control. And hence when we value inventory physically, we help the company keep a check on the theft and fraud also. So what is the inventory valuation principle? The basic inventory valuation principle you must have heard about it is the is that the inventory should be valued at lower of cost or net realizable value also known as NRV. Let's understand the meaning of cost and NRV first. Now cost is the co price at which the company has purchased these goods from the supplier. So the purchase price, but not only that, it also includes whatever expenses or whatever amounts have been paid to get the goods or the inventory items to the location of its sale to the present location of sale. Okay. For giving an example, if the companies purchased an inventory item for let's say $20 from a supplier, but the supplier has not arranged delivery to our location or a warehouse and the companies has to incur carriage inward of let's say dollars one per unit. So what will be the total cost of the inventory? Not dollars 20, but 20 plus one, $21 per unit. Apart from carriage inward, any other expenses like duties or anything else that is paid before we get the inventory to our current location. And then net realizable value is nothing but estimated selling price of the inventory. But after deducting any necessary expenses to complete and sell the inventory item, what do you mean by expenses to complete? So let's say inventory items are not in completed stage. They are in work in progress. So you need to, uh, you might have to incur additional expenses to complete them. So to convert them into finished products. So that, and at times business may have to incur some selling expenses before they can sell the inventory like carriage outward, commission on sales, etc. Now these expenses have to be deducted from estimated selling price to arrive at the net realizable value. Now, once you've understood these terms, now the inventory valuation principle would make more sense. The inventory is to be valued at lower of the cost or NRV. Why is this principle used? Let's have a look at it at the next slide. There are certain accounting principles that form a basis for many of the accounting treatments you've already studied in the course. In the same way, there are two important accounting principles that form a base or the core for the inventory valuation principle. The first one is the historical cost concept, historical cost principle. Now this principle tells you that all transactions, all assets in the business or in the accounting records have to be recorded and valued at their historical cost. Historical cost is the cost at which they were bought or acquired for. So that makes us understand why was the first part of inventory valuation principle to value inventory at cost. So that cost comes from the historical cost principle. Now there's another accounting principle that explains the inventory valuation principle, which is the prudence concept. 
prudence principle prudence states that you should not overstate your assets or profits in any manner you can understate them you can you can record your estimated losses in advance but you can never record your estimated profits in advance now let's see how are these two principles leading us to the eventual inventory valuation principle for that we'll take up two situations in the first situation let's say the cost of the inventory is $10000 and the net realizable value estimated selling price is $15000 now as per the inventory valuation principle inventory shall be valued at $10000 why see you have to understand the effect of inventory on the cost of sales and the gross profit so if your cost of the inventory is 10000 but the estimated selling price or nrv is 15000 so instead of valuing inventory at 10000 if you value it at 15000 what are you trying to do you're trying to reduce your cost of sales by 5000 and increase your gross profit by 5000 but is this correct this 5000 profit on this inventory is not yet realized we are estimating that we will sell it in the next year or next financial period so can we record this 5000 profit in advance no we cannot because prudence does not allow us so hence here we have to value our inventory at cost second situation where the cost of the inventory is 10000 but the business expects to sell it for 7000 nrv is 7000 now here there is an estimated loss that we might incur on the inventory of 3000 so 10000 minus 7000 so if you value your inventory at 10000 here you are not trying to record your potential losses in advance which is against the prudence prudence requires you to estimate your losses and record them in advance for example we've done that in the provision for doubtful debts also so since there's a potential loss here you need to record that in the current year itself how can you do that you you do that by valuing your inventory at 7000 instead of the cost of 10000 when you do this you've increased your cost of sales by 3000 and hence reduced your gross profit by 3000 so when you're following the inventory valuation principle you're making sure that you're not recording your potential profits but you're recording your potential losses in advance now let's have a look at the example on inventory valuation this is the kind of questions you might expect in exam so here we have two inventory items ab12 and kg5 quantity is given purchase cost is given selling price is given apart from that additional information is given The first one is related to AB12, where they tell you that the cost of dollars five is to be incurred on the in inventory item of AB12 before it can be sold. So basically, a selling cost is involved. And the second information is about KG5, where they tell you that carriage of ten dollars per unit is to be paid and to be added on KG5. It's not yet included in the purchase cost. So using this information, can I say okay? Let's do AB12 first. So my ev12 cost per unit is $24 my nrv is $28 estimated selling price but i have to reduce my selling cost estimated selling cost which in the additional information number 1 is given as dollars 5 so i'll reduce 5 so i get my nrv as $23 per unit if you compare your cost and nrv your nrv is lower and hence the value of inventory is to be taken at $23 per unit but we have 100 units in stock so our total inventory value will be $2300 same way for kg5 let's calculate the cost of kg5 first now the cost given as the purchase cost given is $80 but they tell you that a carriage of $10 per unit is to be paid but not yet included i told you all expenses necessary to get the inventory to the location of sale has to be included and hence i'll add 10 to the purchase cost to get a final cost of $90 nrv for this is Hundred. They've not mentioned anything about selling expenses, completing expenses. So I assume that the selling price given is the NRV, which is hundred. If you compare your cost and NRV, cost is lower, dollars ninety per unit, and hence my value of KG five inventory will be dollars ninety multiplied by the number of units in stock forty, thirty six hundred. Now, so what's my total inventory value? Twenty three hundred for AB twelve and thirty six hundred for KG five. Total inventory value will be. Fifty nine hundred dollars. I hope the calculation is clear. So this is the kind of question you might expect in exam, either in form of a multiple choice question or in form of a big question. Now, see, sometimes businesses do have incorrect values placed on the inventory. So the this incorrect value does affect your financial statements. Financial statements means your income statement and your balance sheet. So we need to analyze. 
what in what way has the financial statement been impacted when we place an incorrect value on your on our inventory so first situation what we going to see is when our inventory is overstated whatever is the value of inventory we've stated at a higher value higher amount so what happens to the cost of sales of the current year now to calculate cost of sales if you remember you need to deduct your closing inventory so when closing inventory is overstated obviously your cost of sales will be understated and the cost of sales of next year will be overstated because this closing inventory becomes opening inventory in the next year when opening inventory is overstated cost of sales will be overstated i hope you remember that cost of sales is opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock obviously plus carriage inward minus purchase returns fine but basic opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock so when opening stock in the next year is overstated obviously cost of sales will be overstated let's see our effect on gross profit if the cost of sales of current year is understated if cost is understated obviously the profit will be overstated and what happens to the gross profit of next year next year's cost of sales is overstated so obviously the gross profit will be understated gross profit is nothing but sales minus cost of sales so what happens to net profit if gross profit is overstated in the current year net profit will also be overstated and if gross profit is understated in the next year net profit will also be understated effect on current assets if i value current year inventory incorrectly obviously it will affect my balance sheet also so if the inventory is overstated my overall current assets will also be overstated but will it affect the inventory or the current assets in the balance sheet of the next year no it will not have any effect on the balance sheet of the next year now when we when i go to inventory is understated obviously it will be completely opposite so let's have a quick look on that also so when my inventory is understated my cost of sales will be overstated because closing stock is subtracted right so if stock is understated obviously your cost of sales will be overstated and my next year's cost of sales will be understated effect on gross profit will be opposite to what was there in the cost of sales so if cost of sales is overstated for current year gross profit will be understated and next year's gross profit will be overstated effect on net profit will be similar to what was there in gross profit gross profit understated net profit also understated and ne uh, next year's gross profit was overstated next year's net profit will also be overstated because net profit comes from the gross profit effect on current assets if my current assets if my inventory is understated obviously the current assets in my balance sheet will also be understated because this inventory is a part of the current assets in the balance sheet and no effect in the inventory or the current assets in the balance sheet of the next year i hope the lecture was clear it was very useful for you if you enjoyed it if you think it was useful please like the video share it with your friends and i'll see you in the next video